Hello everybody, this is Coach David from Cutting Edge Fencing. Thanks for taking the opportunity to view this video today. I have some information here on a new direction for cutting edge fencing. We're reimagining what a fencing saw can be from an athlete-centered educational experience in a multi-sport environment. To begin with, let's consider who we are and where we come from. Cutting Edge Fencing is a community of athletes, parents, and coaches centered on the whole athlete. We're focused on lifelong personal development and striving for competitive success. We serve the Tarrant County side of the DFW Metroplex, teaching the Olympic sport of saber fencing and competing at the local, regional, and national levels. We offer group classes and individual lessons and athletic training with a clear and consistent curriculum, as well as community building events for both our members and external groups. Now, for those of you who are familiar, perhaps, with our current our operations and our mission statement in the past, you'll note that this last point has changed a little bit. We have not changed what our motivations are or what it is we're trying to accomplish, but the mechanisms by which we're doing that have undergone some revisions lately. So first, what have you been doing? Well, pre-pandemic operations Cutting Edge Fencing operated out of a full-time space in Merchant Hills, and we utilized a curriculum of instruction that enabled high-level competitive success at the regional and national level. We built a strong, vibrant community of people represented here in our group, and we are so thankful that this community of people has expressed such a great support for us moving forward. We're really, really happy that so many of our members are really excited about what we want to do moving forward. Our commitment to high-level performance has not changed. You can expect the same level of dedication towards high-level competitive success moving forward. In addition, our commitment to providing excellent training is still there. We're often looking to provide you guys with some great experiences moving forward. And we remain committed to welcoming everybody who wants to hold a saber. If you want to be a saber fencer, you are welcome at Cutting Edge Fencing. That is a core thing for all of us. Now, we've learned some important lessons from the COVID-19 pandemic. Basically, target drills and functional footwork training can both teach and sharpen fundamental skills important for both recreational and competitive fencing. This is really important. These target drills we developed are really some of the best work we've ever produced. And it enabled our athletes to continue training in an otherwise inhospitable environment. Now, there's also, it's important to worth mentioning, you know, a clear and specific lesson plan for each practice session really aids in skills acquisition as well as practice sessions that are engaging and enjoyable for everybody. We want you to have fun. We want you to learn something while you're doing it. And we found that the physical layout of our training facilities, as well as the curriculum we were using, need some modifications in order to fully incorporate the lessons of the past months, as well as a few other things we've learned. Some of these other factors we have to take into consideration. We've had some discussions with other fencing clubs, as well as with folks at USA Fencing regarding best practices for training and also the integration of the American development model being promulgated by the United States Olympic Training Center into our operations and practices. And, well, yeah, we've lost access to our old training space in North Christian Hills. We don't have access, we, we can't operate there anymore. We've come to realize though that multi-sport facilities offer options for operations that we didn't have in a fencing exclusive facility. Basically, if we let other, some of the other folks handle some of the other things, it allows us to focus on our core competencies of bringing to you the best fencing training that we have to offer. So what comes next? Well, we have a plan. Right, so we have a place to start, rather. Okay, so resuming operations. Starting the week of January 4th, we will begin operations at the Children's Health Star Center. It's a hockey center in Euless. 
we operate out of a couple of upstairs rooms, uh, rooms in their upstairs area. Mobiles have access to the conditioning facility run by Top Shelf Training, aka the Stephen Garrett Show, that's in the same building. These are the same guys who've been doing our conditioning instruction for the past couple of years, and as everybody in our community knows, they're responsible for the, some of the. They are responsible for helping our athletes to achieve some of the great things. Their conditioning and strengthening programs have made a massive difference in our athletic performance. Where is this facility? Well, it, like I said, it's in Euless, about a 15-minute drive from our current facility or where we were operating, I should say. Centrally located within the Metroplex, it's a little further east than we might have necessarily wanted to target and may not necessarily be the place where we end up being long-term. But right now, we feel it's the best facility we can, we can get access to. Um, we had looked at some other folks around other places in the general area um, that were, might have been convenient for a few of you, but this one represents, we feel, it's the easiest place for the most of our athletes to be able to get to, and the most of our families. And it also represents some long-term possibilities in this in this center as either one or one part of a, a suite of programs at different multi-sport facilities across Tarrant County. So this right here is gonna become our targeted and footwork drills room. We'll have access to this room on a full-time basis, basically at any point we need. Uh, planning on using Primarily target drills in here. Uh, we also should be able to do some of our level two partner drills in here as well. The plan is to set up 10 target stations, as well as room for bag storage, um, a few other things in here, and a couple of little surprises we have planned going forward. Uh, our future plans include putting down suitable flooring, as well as some small rentable locker spaces for people to keep their fencing equipment going forward as well. This right here is gonna become our bouting and lessons room. At the moment, this is a shared space. However, we have access to it during our practice times and select other times during the day. It is room for two full-length strips, and we'll be using our two Favero FVO5s and wheels for bouting. However, we hope to transition fairly soon to wireless reels. It's going to assist us with setup and takedown, as well as provide a kind of a cool experience, and we may be able to do something different with the flooring in here later on. Outside of these rooms, in the upstairs area, basically cutting edge fencing is the only thing going on up here. There's plenty of room for parents and people waiting for a training space to have socially distance up here. And the building has plenty of Wi-Fi and outlets, or I should say has Wi-Fi, and plenty of outlets and tables. It's a great facility. And the feeling, the vibe in the facility, the feeling there is really, really nice. Everyone there is very welcoming, very friendly. And it's nice to be around other high-level athletes. All right, the layout for the target room. This is what it's going to look like. We plan to have 10 targets built for use in here when we start. And then we're going to add other components as the funds and capacity become available. The targets in here are going to be a new design, basically version 2.0. So that might imply some other things. But yes, we are planning on having a couple of other exciting ways of doing targets in the future. Really have some cool thoughts in the back of our heads about what we can do moving forward with this. But basically what you're looking at here is our target and training drills, training drills facility. The bounding room, well, this, these are two full 17 meter strips in here for reference. Now, obviously we no longer have our metal strips that we had 10 of them in the old facility. So we can't lay anything down like that in here at the moment, but in the future, who knows what could happen. So just look at that, think about that going forward. Now our curriculum and cost structures, what are we going to do? What are we gonna teach and how's it all gonna work? Okay, here's what we got. We're looking at three different levels of instruction. Level one, these are the folks who are just starting out. Some of you guys already are at this, le are at this level. This is also where new fencers are going to come into the program. These fencers work exclusively on target drills and footwork drills. They're focused on fundamental training techniques. Now, level two, basic saber competencies. These people are also working on target and footwork drills, but with more complicated actions. 
a lot of the stuff we've developed during the pandemic, these folks are going to be doing very, very similar kinds of things. However, we're going to add in basic partner drills. And these folks are also learning how to bout. Then we have our level three folks. These are competitive and performance. They're doing level two target and footwork drills. And they're also doing level two partner drills. But they're going to add in more complicated partner drills, looking at higher level techniques, tactical situations, and adding in more realistic and competitive bouting exercises. Now, all Sabercats will be reevaluated as the appropriate level of instruction they should partake in. We've been doing this on and taking notes as we've been developing this program. So they're going to have regular assessments for all students going forward. And as pointed out, we've integrated the best of all our previous work with the lessons we've learned during the pandemic. There is something here for everybody, no matter what your level is. We have things for, the mo for our very, very basic beginners as well as our fencers who are competing at the national level. All right, a deep dive into these programs. So level one instruction. These are folks who are at the introductory level, the white level and the yellow level, the beginner level. Introduction level, you're learning, looking at learning the basic language of fencing, how to be safe, how to hold the weapon, how to advance and retreat, things of that nature. Beginner levels, you're looking on vocabulary. What's the culture of fencing? How do fencers talk to each other? What are the fundamental fencing training components you need to understand? And what are the fundamental offensive and defensive elements of Sabre? How do you make an attack? How do you defend? What are the pieces that you're going to use going forward? All right. How are you going to learn this? Well, you're going to do this through target and footwork drills classes. You can also do this for private lessons. Um, we have specific target and footwork drills classes with actions targeted for this level to develop the core movement and weapon skills of saber fencing. Athletes are going to need their own glove and saber only for these target and footwork drills classes, or if you want a mask to do private lessons. And that's all the equipment that you need. Level two instruction. This is the basic level, the orange level. These folks are learning to work with partners. They're learning about putting the material that they learned in the beginning levels into practice across from an opponent. They're developing the basic saber competencies. And they're also learning how to bout and display basic refereeing skills. Level two instruction, how are you going to get this? Well, these targeted footwork drills, again, they're going to rotate around a specific set of actions. Now, these targeted footwork drills these level two fencers are in are also going to be attended by people working on level three skills. Level two fencers are also going to add in partner drills and bouting. These level two partner drills we're talking about, they're the basic level drills. And our old system, they would have been yellow drills. These level, these are the the really core things, all right? It's also level three persons are also going to do level two partner drills on a fairly regular basis to make sure they're refreshed on the basic saber competencies. We're gonna have bouting time specifically for level two students working on bouting, basic bouting skills. And these folks can also participate in open bouting. Athletes who want to work at this level need to have their own full set of equipment, uniform and lame. And you know what? It's also recommended they have one to two private lessons per month just to help them progress through this material. Level three instruction. These are for higher level fencers, folks at the intermediate competitive performance levels. This is where you're learning more in depth. You're talking about preparations. We're talking about deceptions. We're integrating nutrition, physical conditioning, different types of training, working on tactical boutings, working on complex preparations, looking at integrated bout strategies and long-term planning. Essentially, these are the skills necessary for operations at the local or competitions, 
These are the skills necessary for competitions at the local, the regional, and the national level. How are you going to do this? Well, these folks are going to participate in these level two target and footwork drills we spent a lot of time preparing over the pandemic, as well as the basic level two partner drills. And we may separate these different color levels out in the future. And they're going to participate in specific level three partner drills classes. Again, we may separate the different color levels from folks who are at the level three in the future as our numbers grow. We're also going to have a different number of batting opportunities available for these folks to participate in. And it's really strongly suggested they take part in at least one to two lessons per week. And you should be partaking in conditioning through either top shelf or an external provider. Again, we have access to this in this multi-sport environment. That's going to allow us to have access. These folks know how to train. These are great instructors who are teaching you about weightlifting, conditioning, and all the other elements that help to support a competitive athlete. Okay, membership rates. So all people in the program are going to pay a basic membership, and this is just starting out right now, around $80 to $100 a month. We're still playing with what the exact numbers are going to be. This is going to give you access to two targeted footwork drills classes each week. So if you're at the level one student, this is what you're going to do right here. Now, if you're a level two student or a level three student, and you need more targeted footwork drills classes, you want to do partner drills, you want batting sessions, well, right now, those are going to be at $10 each drop-in for members or $20 for non-members. Private lessons, these are $30 for members and $40 for non-members. As well, we have also access to the top shelf training. This is about $75 a month for two sessions a week if signed up through Cutting Edge Fenton. Other operational notes. So we're working on evaluating providers for their membership operations and signups, basically the Zen Planner replacement. Some more details on this to come. We'll hope to have some information about that very, very soon. Um, each session, each class is going to require signups in advance, and that'll operate through this new system that we're hoping to deploy. All right, our schedule. Let's list the class schedule for January. So you can see it right here. We're also going to publish in our, this on our website. I'm going to send it out to everybody. It's going to be really easy to find this information. This is the, the types of operations we think we can do right now and perhaps moving forward as well. Okay. So future plans. Now, we do think these operational plans are going to be adjusted based upon community feedback and the expressed desires of our athletes and their families. What are we going to do? How is that stuff going to move forward? This is just a place to start. It's going to allow us to grow, to get moving, and to keep our community working together. We're looking for a permanent operational space in Tarrant County, ideally in a multi-sport environment and quite possibly in multiple locations. We had some really productive conversations with large multi-sport groups in Tarrant County, as well as also the Sports Commission. There's some really exciting possibilities um, out on the horizon. And we're also looking at establishing a foundation to help with uh, supporting our community outreach programs, and as well as training opportunities for low-income students. It's been handled by scholarships from the, our program directly, but we think there's a better way to handle these things moving forward. And we're taking some lessons from um, other folks who operate in these multi-sport environments on how they can do this kind of stuff. So thanks everybody for coming and uh, viewing this video. I appreciate your time. If you have any, any questions, please feel free to drop us a line. Give us a call. You know where to find us. We look forward to seeing you guys the first week in January. Take care.